right, we are recording. All right, what's up, everyone? Uh, this is Chris Parker. I'm here with Chris Wild, and uh, we're going to do a podcast for you guys today. I'm pretty excited about this. Um, Chris Wild is, you know, probably one of the best guys I've ever heard of, especially in like the, um, especially in like the Europe area, right? You're in Stockholm, so mm-hmm. um, pretty amazing. Like, so what we're going to do today is we're going to talk about, um, you know, kind of who we are the type of work we like to do, who we like to work with, um, you know, who we could really help. And then we're going to shoot some questions back, going back and forth, uh, where we could, you know, where, where we're both going to find out about each other for the first time, really about our, our, each other's style, because it's, it seems very, very different. Um, so we're going to crack into it. Uh, Chris, uh, wild and Chris Parker, why don't you go first? All right. Hey guys. Uh, all right, Chris already made an introduction to me. I run my own company here in uh, Stockholm, Sweden. It's called Social Prime. And right now it's the fastest growing one in Europe as far as I know. And we're, we're slowly taking over. Uh, probably you guys are going to see me in America soon because I'm planning a bootcamp in Los Angeles in June. And uh, I don't think we should waste much time with the, the introductions because we want to keep it a bit short. So I think we should um, we should jump on type of people we like to work with because there is a big difference uh, with the groups that me and Chris work with. We cover completely different groups. Chris, you want to start? Yeah, sure. Um, so yeah, my my whole philosophy, like what actually got me into this uh, as as in coaching, outside of just getting really cool results, was I really felt that the industry as a whole is kind of like in a way hurting a lot of guys because for one they're teaching a lot of things that obviously are not proven because I've tried them over and over and over again mm-hmm. so I had my friends and didn't get us anywhere um, you know but but the biggest thing was I was finding that that like a lot of coaches seem to be selling like this transformational thing like you have to spend like years and years of working on yourself before a girl will sleep with you regularly it's like come on man So what I really was finding was a lot of guys feel like almost destroyed inside because in their mind, they're not that great with girls, right? They haven't gotten that amazing results. And then so what happened was then they find like the best information out there and they're trying to do it and they're still not getting laid. So what's that do to them? It like destroys their self-esteem where they're like, even Mm -hmm. with the best advice, I still suck. I'm never going to be good at this. So what I so it's funny because so you you teach a lot of like the inner game stuff. What I actually like to do, although I do teach inner game stuff as well, it's kind of like to, I like to show guys, look, you really don't need to be that cool to get laid consistently. The cooler you are, the more consistently you'll get laid. But you really like you know, if you've already banged a, a few girls in your life, chances are there's a few more out there that you can meet uh-huh. in a, in a club of like 200 people you're probably going to be able to bring at least a few of those girls home if you if you just don't do anything stupid, right? So, like, I know a lot of coaches, they teach to say, like, outlandish comments. And I'm like, come on, you know, that shit will yeah, alarm sometimes anyone. It's, sometimes it's, it's, it's as simple as not fucking up. It's just not fucking up, right? Just don't... Not fucking up, that's all you need to do. Just don't set off red flags. Times. Yeah, so I just mm-hmm. show guys, like, don't say stupid things. Like, don't set off red flags. Don't be shady... Or when you're, for instance, like going to bring her home, don't be like, oh, we're going somewhere close by. And the girl's like, where are we going? Like, they're like, don't worry about it. Like, I've had guys come to my program and think that because that's what they learn from other people, that's what you should say. And it's really like, if that would scare the shit out of any of us. Like, dude, if my sister, let's just say, told me she went home with a guy that did that, I would be like, you're an idiot. Right? You don't know. He, he, you didn't even know where you were going. So I teach them to not set off red flags and just lead it home. And just so they could see, look, as you are, you're already pretty kick-ass. And just keep working on being more kick-ass so this way you have more options. So that's, that's my philosophy in a nutshell. How about, how about yourself? We have, we have some points. For me, I think Julian has also said something similar. Yeah, you said something about the transformation. Yeah. Uh, that it takes usually a long time. I actually do believe in this transformation, but I don't believe that it, it needs to take two years or three years or four years. I believe that you can make the exact same thing in a matter of one week. Nice. Okay. 
as long as, as long as you have a coach who knows how to do that shit. Um, and that, that's something that I'm working on uh, and researching a lot, how to basically hack the brain, how to basically hack your inner game to supercharge it in a very small amount of time. Um, but for me, the, the thing, I'm going to come back to this thing that Julian said, and now I'm saying a lot, is we have this mentality in the pickup industry. We say a lot of times, fake it until you make it. Mm. Uh, and this sounds bad, uh, and your brain cannot absorb it very well, because by saying, it, saying fake it until you make it, you kind of assume that you're not already there. You kind of assume that you're missing something, that you don't have something, in, in this case, a self-esteem that you talked about earlier. Uh, and how I would like to rephrase this is instead of telling yourself, fake it until you make it, tell yourself, remind yourself who you can be. Mm -hmm. Instead of, I fake it until I make it, I tell myself, I remind myself who I can truly be, who I can become. Mm -hmm. So it's like you already have it, it's already there, you just have to remind your brain that you can do that shit. And this is like my approach about inner game. Because I see a lot of students and I tell them, look, bro, there is guys that are uglier than you, shorter than you. Uh, they're way more poor than you. Uh, you know, they have a lot of shit happening on their lives. And somehow those guys are making, are doing amazingly well with girls. So what is the only fucking difference between you and this guy that, you know, physically or whatever, financially, he's worse than you. What is the, the main fucking difference? It's his fucking beliefs. And this is like my approach in the inner game that it's all basically in your fucking head. If this guy, he, he's like technically by society's point, uh, society's point of view, he's worse than you, but he believes that he is not, he's going to make it and you're not. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm going to try. I'm going to try and teach you how to, te to constantly remind yourself that, you know, you actually have it. Mm -hmm. You're just assuming that you don't and that's why you're fucking yourself in the ass. So you, okay, so so to make sure I understand, it it sounds like you believe the guys already have it. They just doubt that they have it, and that's what's fucking them over. Yeah, that's what's blocking them from from performing well, because uh, your subconscious, like the naturals, for example, mm -hmm. now nobody ever taught the natural how to pick up girls or how to talk or what to say or you know check logistics, all that kind of bullshit. Uh, nobody ever told him that shit, mm -hmm. but somehow he still can do amazingly well. Like I know naturals. We can fuck 100 girls in the summer, uh, all right, and how to do it. They use their subconscious mind to do everything that we're trying to do inefficiently with our conscious minds. Mm -hmm. And I've, I've seen, like, your library with uh, your bookshelf. You have a lot of books that talk about those concepts, right? Yeah, like subconscious sure. mind versus conscious mind. And this is what I think this is, is the main mistake in the pickup industry, that we're trying to teach guys how to use their conscious brain to pick up women, which is very slow and inefficient. Mm -hmm. While the natural is doing the exact opposite, he, he completely shuts down his conscious brain. He doesn't try to think about shit. All he has in his mind is, oh, talk to the girl. That's all he's consciously thinking about, talk to mm -hmm. the girl. And then his subconscious kind of like takes control of the rest. And then you have a, a perfectly smooth uh, and very like nice flowing interaction. And this is what I'm trying to teach to my students, how to, to replicate those mindsets, those beliefs that the natural has, so they can unleash the power of their subconscious. Mm -hmm. So I'm definitely going to have a couple questions for you on that because it sounds interesting, but it's not totally clear to me. But one thing I, I could definitely relate to is I tell my students the same fucking thing. It's like, dude, you already have it in you. Stop acting exactly. like you fucking don't. For one, it's like guys come, come to me and they think because they haven't pulled in a long time that they suck. And it's like, dude, they're not pulling – they're not mm -hmm. you're not not pulling because you suck you're not pulling because you're not letting them know that they could come home with you you're not actually inviting them home so like you're you know so you spend two three hours thinking like it's just gonna happen on its own and it doesn't happen on its own stop assuming that you're not fucking cool like you have to be super cool for the girl to come home with you trust that if you're having a conversation with the girl you guys are vibing like she's prob she's only there because she's down to explore where this could go the other thing I would say is a lot of guys where they fuck themselves, like you said, in the ass is where the girl, they, they're talking to the girl and they want to go for the makeout and they overthink it and they don't go for the makeout and then they start getting all choppy and anxious. This is the thing I'm, I'm talking about, conscious versus subconscious. Yep. Uh, you get like this little voice in your head which tells you to go for the makeout. It's time to kiss the girl. And, and this little it. voice in your head, the, exactly, this is your subconscious, your instinct, let's say. That knows exactly what you have to do and when you have to do it. It and knows you, the perfect time and the perfect way. And you, you're overthinking it. You're using your conscious brain. Your conscious brain is muffling 
your subconscious, mm -hmm. and then you're fucking up because your conscious brain is not as smart as the subconscious. Yeah. This is my. It's a really good. You brought it up. It's a really good example of this. This uh, that I'm talking about. Yeah, man, I totally relate to that. It's like, it's like, dude, you already knew when to go for the makeout. You just didn't do it because you it's thought you would fuck it up. You thought you'd creep exactly. her out. And it's like, dude, I had my, so I had a student last night. Uh, what was it? Was it last? It was last night where um, I got them into an isolated space. They're sitting at a table by themselves. And, um, but there's like a foot, there's like a two foot gap between them. And I'm like, dude, you didn't want to sit that far away from her. So you should have moved closer. Even if it's awkward for a second, you just move closer. And so then what I did was I, I came up, I, um, I set the whole structure for them to go back home together because he, he, he didn't do it on his own. And, um, but even so, even if they were to go back home together, like it still needs to be sexual. So what I do, I like forced his hand without her realizing onto her lap and the entire dynamic where she was kind of sitting there, sitting back, all of a sudden his hand is on her lap and she's like, like in love with him. And it's like, Guys think that you need to, for this is just a side topic, but guys think that you need to like finger the girl or get crazy makeouts for her to be super into you. Sometimes just putting your fucking hand on her lap and seeing how she responds is enough for her to feel your presence and like the masculinity and the fact that you're into her. And it's like they overthink it. They think like it's this crazy fucking thing needs to happen. Mm -hmm. Like the pull just goes down like a fucking, wow. you know. Or the top, all those, those dude, but I, stuff yeah. that people see on the infields, they are... It's it's flashy shit and doesn't. It's, it's shit. It's just like things just draw attention in the videos. And actually, if begin try to do the same things, yeah, it might be a bit funny, or whatever. But it's it's very risky. It's, uh, for me, game is not all that flashy stuff. Yeah, of course, the flashy stuff is is funny, whatever. But if you actually have the goal to go home with a girl, uh, for me, it's like something that you should probably avoid. Yep, agreed. Uh, as you said, it doesn't need to be a very flashy interaction as long as it goes like well and you don't fuck up it's all cool uh like the thing that i've been doing a lot lately the past half year maybe uh, don't even escalate on the girl until i've already pulled until okay. i'm already on the apartment the pool location whatever that is i don't escalate it like you don't touch maybe not, not, not even a makeout maybe i will dance closely but it's not like all oh, the makeout the fingering the, the hardcore shit or hard escalation soft stuff small stuff because uh -huh. for me that is risky and it's an unnecessary risk there is no reason I for agree. that uh, the girl knows already that you like her just by you being here, talking to her, having the eye contact, which is for me the best way to show intent, and that's enough for her. And if yeah. you do all the, the risky flashy stuff, what can you do? You just risk to trigger defenses. You just yeah. risk to do your yeah. I agree. Yeah, I. It, it's funny. I, I'm of the same belief that like I don't go – if I go for a makeout, it's a very small one, very small. Exactly. What I actually like to do is I, I like to make it a little bit more romantic or whatever, like we're a team. So I will I will hold her hand, right? I'll walk with her hand in hand. I might like have my arm around her, nothing over the top sexual. Like once – I save all that shit for the bedroom, you know, once we're, like you said, back at your apartment. But – um. I definitely like no over the top sexual stuff, like no fingering. But if you exactly if you do all that stuff in the club, what is he gonna think? That you're a desperate and on a socially calibrated retard. Right, it, dude. It's fucking, it, and it, it will it will set off so many defenses. I don't do mm -hmm. any of that shit either. I will I will hold hand in hand. Um, I will do things like that. I will hug her and like really like a firm hug, you know, a tight hug where it's kind of like you know a masculine type of hug. But nothing fucking crazy. Like I actually want, because again, like I'm actually not even trying to bang these girls once. I'm trying to bang them over and over and over again. Like I want them in my life. If 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 she was awesome enough for me to hook up with one time, she should be awesome enough for me to hook up with for months, you know, or years mm -hmm. or whatever. And like, yeah. So that's very interesting. You're of the same belief. A lot of guys fi feel similar that you know. Those intense makeouts, that flashy shit, will do more harm than good. It's all this thing created by RSD with the flashy infields, uh, but it's actually a huge mistake. Like, huge. A good example since you brought up on my first bootcamp ever, I had a student who was doing amazingly well with a girl. She fucking loved him, but then somehow he, he thought it was a good idea to like go very hardcore in the club, starts like biting her neck really hard, uh, very like it. extremely passionate make make out like. And that's, but at some point it's just like, saying anything, she stops and runs away. 
Mm -hmm. Out of nowhere, and the the guy is like looking at me like, what the fuck happened? I'm like, dude, what are you doing? (laughs) Bro, like, why are you doing all this stuff? And it was a very club with, you know, kind of like alternative hipsteries, comfort girls, where this is actually very social and acceptable. Yeah, yeah. I find the same because you can't do that stuff yeah yeah i find the same thing like when you're when you're at, when it's getting too sexual but there's not that like trust there or familiarity there the girl it's like she'll get sucked into the moment with you but the moment something happens that snaps her out of that moment you're fucked like she will she will become very uncomfortable feel slutty be like what the fuck am i doing and you'll lose her you know that could happen i've had it happen in my old uh you know, in, in a situation where like I was hooking up with a girl and then my roommate came home and she hears the door slam and then she's like, oh shit. And like really got, she realized like we got caught up in a moment together, you know? And, and so you have to, and so I almost lost that girl if I didn't reframe it and say things like, wow, you know, like we got, we totally got carried away. That probably shouldn't have happened. Right. And so like really feel, really reframe that thing. Yeah. I would have lost her. She would have been like, Uh what the fuck? I get what you mean. You know what I mean? The next thing I think uh, we want to talk about is how being a good coach doesn't necessarily, uh, you know, like coaching and being and uh, having good game are totally different things. And so what I think every, everyone's very skeptical about in the industry with signing up for coaching is, well, two things. For one, they're not convinced that just because you could do it, they could do it, right? That's mm-hmm. one. And two, they're not even convinced you could do it, right? And when I say you, I'm just saying in general, like there's so many guys yeah. who are just regurgitating the same thing that they've read somewhere. And so, and there's no, and, and so guys just don't know whether like, just because you got a phone number, d- does that mean you got laid? Like is the girl uh-huh. in your life? Was that a solid number? Guys don't really have context. So that's what I think you and I try to do is mm-hmm. uh, try to show like, tell the entire story, give as much proof that, you know, we, how we met her and how she ended up in our life and like, sex yeah, we, we don't have a problem with that. We can, exactly. we can support our claims. Right. We can support, so, you know, right. That so, we actually have the skill. My question was like, what, what, uh, is for you needed for somebody? What does somebody need to actually be apart from good in game, a good coach? What I think makes, um, I think coaching kind of could be, very much dependent on the student, his his own abilities to to learn and his really um, his own drive and his skill level. So I think, for instance, I don't typically take too many new guys who need like me to be behind them at every second, like a drill sergeant, like approach, approach. I I don't do that. Um, so you know, I think for me, like for me, in order for me to be a really good coach, I need to understand who I could help, right? And I think mm-hmm. that's also uh, I think that's a big skill for a coach to have is to understand where their strengths are, who who they're going to be able to help. Um, I would never be able to help. Uh, I at least I, don't, I wouldn't even want to try to help somebody who's who's not sold on approaching is the way to live. Mm-hmm. You know, so yeah. but like so I would be the worst person for them. You know, I would tell them, but I'm I'm not going to be behind them every two seconds. Um, so I think you know, um, I think yeah. I, I, does that answer your question? I can expand that yeah, out a little much. bit. For instance, like the way I tell my students how they're going to be coached to set expectations is I say, think of me as like a personal trainer. You know, I will be there with all the information to help get you the results. I will be beside you making sure that you're like everything you do is proper. And I will be like spot, you know, we call it in America. I don't know if it's different in Europe. We call it a spot. Like I will spot you to lift that weight if, you know, basically give them that extra push if they're struggling. So, for example, if they need mm-hmm. to be like, dude, go approach that girl and they do it on their own. I would do that, but I, I'm not going to be like, dude, go approach, go approach, go approach. Dude, what are you doing here? Go. I'm not. I gonna. have to do that. Yeah. Uh, but it's it's a good mentality. The, thing, the um, phrase you just said, like about t- uh, seeing it as being a personal trainer, it's actually a really good mindset to be about it. Uh, yeah, we have a difference over there. You said that you don't take every guy. Yeah. I actually, I will actually take everyone and see it as a challenge, even the most fucked up ones, uh, if we can say it like that. Uh, and I kind of like take absolute responsibility for me uh, giving them uh, those results. Mm. All right. So even if somebody is like that, you know, they, they might not don't want to approach, or they might have a, whatever, whatever issues. You know, I, for me, it's it's my responsibility to actually motivate them and make them do the approach. 
Because it's, mm. it's a problem that a lot of guys have. It's approach anxiety. Okay, I can't fucking approach. And they right. fucking freeze. They, they get, they're terrified. Uh, so for I see this as a part of the inner game training of them like removing this fear, removing this uh, feeling of anxiety. Uh, but to get back to the question, for me, what is, how is a good coach? Uh, I see that a lot. I've seen this like with all the students I had and friends and wings that I've tried to help, that people have different brains. Uh, what do I mean by that? Some guys are more intelligent. Some guys are a bit dumb. All right. And that's that's perfectly natural. Uh, but you got to adjust your coaching according to that. That's one thing. How intelligent the student is or how much experience he already has in the field. Do we need to go back to the basics or can we do more advanced stuff? Or as I said, if, if they're not like as intelligent, you need to find a way to make the same concepts understood by explaining them in a simpler way. Mm. in a vocabulary that kind of like they understand uh like a phrase that a teacher of mine said, said in, in when i was in high school was okay when i when i teach my students uh i i'd like to teach them as i would like somebody else to teach me mm. and what i mean by that when I, if i want some if i have somebody teaching me i want them to you know use terms that they understand i want them to keep the coaching at my level and i want them to be uh relate i want them to relate so another thing that I'm going to talk about now is that some people have technical and analytical minds and some people are more spiritual. For sure. Uh, a, a very good example of that, if we look at RSD, Julian is a more spiritual, abstract kind of like guy when it comes to coaching. And Todd is the exact opposite. He's very analytical and very uh, logical in the way he explains stuff. Oh, yeah, I know. Uh, I saw but, him out last night boring the shit out of girls. Yeah, I saw. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's boring as shit. It's fucking boring. Uh, it's yeah when the way he talks is boring but some people resonate a lot to the way he explains stuff sure for example things that i i didn't understand from julia and i looked at todd and yeah boring shit you know when you watch it but it makes sense because i have a very logical and analytical brain uh -huh. so if i find but i don't stick to one of those styles i'm not gonna say oh i'm analytical logical so i'm gonna be like this in my coaching and fuck everybody else uh -huh. or you know this this student is a bit spiritual so fuck him uh, I try to adapt to that. If a, if a guy is like more into spiritual explaining, so more abstract, if you want, not spiritual necessarily, I'm going to try to do it like this. Yeah, yeah. If somebody's into technical stuff, I'm going to try to explain the same concepts, but through psychology, through uh, uh, biology, through neuroscience. Mm -hmm. I'm, just, I'm just trying to make it relatable to the way that they can understand it. The easiest. Yeah, yeah, that's that's awesome that you that you have that where you actually see everyone as a challenge. I don't do that. I'm like, I so you know one thing that a lot of guys know about me is I was actually about to go to med school. I wanted to be an orthopedic surgeon, and that's a specialty. Like, no, you would not come to me if you had a cold. You'd come to me if you had a fucking mm. real bone problem. You know that. So like, I love being like, look at what I do. I'm definitely of the best. And if you're not coming to me for that reason, like there are other people and I'd rather yeah, just like yeah. solve the same fucking few problems over and over and over again. No, be known as that guy that's like, you know, kind of like Dr. House, right? If you ever seen the show, yeah, people amazing. go to him for the worst fucking problems. And I'm like, look, you know, I will solve your pulling problem and I will solve your retention problem and your rotation problem, but I'm not going to solve your approach problem, you know? <laughs> That's, that's not, you know, that's not me. So that's, that is very cool. Um, so those, so you like to help everyone. Of course, like, I think all of us want to help everyone, but you, do you I don't have, necessarily do you have like it, but I will do it. But yeah, so like I might take some. Of like course, that. I like to, sure. to coach more advanced guys because we can do crazier stuff together. It's way yeah. more fun. You know, you talk to somebody oh, yeah. who's closer to your level, so it's easier okay. for you. But of course, I take everyone. It's a do challenge you, for me. Do you have, do you have somebody that like, you could, you know, that when they come on program, you could fucking rock their world. Like somebody mm. specifically, do you have like a personality? You will fucking rock their world. Like who's your favorite type of person to coach? The guy with the childhood issues. The childhood issues? That's yeah. Hysterical. Those so, guys are usually the ones that get the, uh, the big mind blow. Those are the guys that usually get the big when mind blow from my When you say childhood issues, do you mean like they were like molested or like they're, they were No, 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 not the fuck that. <laughs> Those are going to send them to a psychologist, uh -huh. all right? Uh, but I mean, I mean like self-esteem issues uh -huh. or, you know, maybe not the best relationship with their parents. Maybe, I don't know, guys who are getting a bit bullied, but not like as deep as the stuff that you just said, like not that fucked up. Uh -huh. 
Right, right, right. Cool. I got you. That sounds very. That sounds very cool. All right. So, um, what I really like to do is jump into a bunch of uh, questions that we have for each other. I was telling you uh, right before we jumped on this call that one of the things that I think um, is very cool is that you were telling me that you live with your girlfriend, and it sounds like you guys go out and pull girls together, and you guys have a, a structure to that, which is also very cool. And that's going to be one of my que next questions: how you set that up. But um, I was telling you, just to give everyone else a little bit of context, I remember, for instance, I had a girl who came to live with me um, for yep. 10 days from Rome. I live in New York. She flew in. I, you know, and the entire, we shared a bed together. We shared my closet now. I went from being this totally single guy to sharing everything, sharing the same bathroom, sharing the same room. And it fuck, I felt so claustrophobic. And the fucked up part was, I felt like I couldn't escape and I understood my why my father would want to leave at like 9 p.m. to go get milk all of a sudden. Like he seemed so fucking excited. I never understood that. And then I found myself um, wanting to put in more hours at work and like finding every excuse to stay out and just let her have my apartment. And I really identified with a lot of the shit that, guy, that men go through that I didn't before. Uh, one thing... I also found to be very frustrating was I hated sex with her. So she, sex was great, but it was like, it was like, I felt so suffocated that I wanted to be left alone completely, but she came to see me and she wanted to hook up, up obviously. And so I just wanted my own space. So she's feeling super rejected by me, which made her want to validate herself by having sex with me, which only so made her chase, which made me push yeah. further away. <laughs> Which, which made her insecure and drive me crazy. Like, why aren't you attracted to me? And it was a big fucking headache. And so one thing I could definitely say I learned from that is I went from being, you know, having like a very distant relationship with her. We lived on opposite sides of the world. We only spoke like a few times a month and we hung out and stuff. But I realized if I was ever going to do something like that, I really need to grow into that situation as opposed to just throw myself mm. into it. And I really think maybe I'll feel differently next year or something, but that's really how I feel. So my, my question to you would be, how do you, how do you live in like, uh, an, an, uh, an environment with somebody else who, you know, you're probably, maybe you're splitting the bills. Like how do you handle situations where like things, you know, ideally you, you know, ideally you should be splitting a lot of things. You guys are, you know, financial stuff. You guys are um, sharing the same bed. Like everything's being shared. And so how do you deal with like being your own person with uh -oh. and, and but, but uh -oh. while still being a teammate and I get it, I get it. within the context of being in your own home, being in a home together? I'm, I'm, very I'm used to that, that shit, man. I'm fucking yeah. used to that shit. Yeah. Uh, I've lived in Sweden for almost four years now and three out of those four years, I spend them leaving together with girls. Okay. So it's a long fucking time. And yes, of course, in the beginning, it was hard as fuck. Um, but for me, the key point, I'm, I don't, I don't want to get into details, okay, bills and sharing the bed and all that kind of stuff. Um, but the main point is that it depends a lot on the girl and of course on you. On your side, you have to be empathetic. You have to try to be grateful. You have to try to uh, appreciate the small things. All right, the things that you wouldn't have without her. Uh, and on the other side, as you said, you had an insecure girl who was chasing you and she was suffocating you. Uh, and if I was in a similar situation, I would I would behave as you. I wouldn't be able to stand living with a girl like that, that is suffocating me because I also want to have my personal space. I also want to be able to work and not being distracted. Uh, so for me, it comes, uh, it comes down a lot to the choice of the girl. Uh, it has to be a high self-esteem girl. It has to be, otherwise it's not gonna work. And it's not only when uh, when you live with somebody, it's pretty much in everything. When it comes to friendships, when it comes to uh, whatever, if you are hanging out with low self-esteem people or if your girlfriend is a low self-esteem self person, this is gonna drag you down. This mm -hmm. is gonna suffocate you, she's gonna take you like all the way to her level. Uh, and at the same time, she's gonna be a bit lifted by you, but that's another story. Uh, so it comes a lot to the choice of the person. So what do you need in this case, if you are eventually going to do that and live together with a, a woman, you need to pick her very carefully. She needs to be a, a woman that she's on your level. She has a similar level of self-esteem as you. Maybe she, she's some kind of enter, entrepreneur. So, you know, she's not suffocating. She has her own business to work on as well. Mm. 
and you're not you're not like your whole world basically that's interesting so do you have anything that specifically you think like these are three things that I've noticed are like make all the difference for instance like you know how about like boundaries when they're overstepping your boundaries like for example you know we've all had roommates and this is now not just a roommate this is your girlfriend who's your roommate yeah how do you handle boundaries like overstepping boundaries I'm curious to know like if there's a few different things that you feel is very very important when it comes for, to boundaries, understanding go, and respecting each uh, other. When it comes to binary boundaries, I go in the, I go the soft way. I try to avoid tension because tension it gathers up and eventually it builds like a bubble and then pops and then the relationship pops with it. So I try to avoid the tension. I go like being very empathetic, and I try to make her understand that okay, I try to make her understand by herself that okay, if she's doing something that I don't like, I try to show this in another way than, you know, directly arguing and confronting and like being very uh, aggressive about it. Uh, also, this thing that you, you said earlier for me, uh, I'm looking for three things in a woman. Uh, let's say that you have a woman that has good looks. That for me is one night stand. Let's say that you have a woman who has good looks and high self-esteem. That's a fuck buddy. Let's say that you have a woman with looks, high self-esteem and intelligence. Uh, for me, that one is the girlfriend material that I would I could live with. Yeah. Uh, but of course, you have to do a lot of uh, yeah. You have to compromise in a lot of things when you live with somebody. And uh, to be honest, yeah, I, I do live. I do miss my uh, single life a lot. Uh, it's not about being single. I miss having my own place. If you want, it's more like that. Uh, yeah, but course, like like everything, yeah. but you're getting used to it. Like everything, like there's always going to be, you know, a con to everything, right? Like you can't, nothing's going to ever be perfect. It's kind of like there's, nothing's if you ever heard of Joe perfect. Rogan, uh, he, he was having an interview with Dan Bilzerian. and he was saying, how do you deal with everyone? Um, you know, like everyone's saying like, dude, you're, you, it's got to get old banging a whole bunch of girls. And he's like, you know what, but what else gets old? So does marriage. <laughs> everything <laughs> has a time and a place, you know, and things that, you know, you're going to have great situations with some downsides. There's going to be jealousy in a great relationship with a bombshell girl that you love. Everything. The way I see things. all this, yeah, you yeah. see those as obstacles. Uh, I see them as ways to learn. Because mm. from my relationships, I've le uh, I've had, the, this is the second relationship I've had since I moved to Sudan and I also lived with a fat body for half a year. Uh, and there was a lot of shit, especially in the previous two ones. This one is pretty smooth. But especially the previous two ones, there was a lot of shit going down, and I tried to learn from them. I saw them as challenges that I had to overcome, and then eventually I took a lesson. And the things that I learned from the relationships is things that you will never learn from any kind of cold approach. It's impossible to learn that stuff from cold approach. Uh, and you get a really, really good insight into the female psychology when you when you actually get to live with them. You're in their everyday life, in their in their everyday thoughts. You see them uh, more as human beings, especially like for the guys that put girls on a pedestal. You see them and they're like you. They're like normal humans when you live with them. And suddenly all these like perfect images like kind of crumbles. And then they come to your level like, you know, something like that. Um, For sure, yeah. That's amazing. I'm telling you, I'm even getting anxious just thinking about it. Like as I'm thinking about living with a girl right now, I'm like, oh my God, I could, I could not handle that. Like I would probably push myself to do it at some point just for the learning experience. But fuck, dude, that does – that sounds like a – Fucking the best solution is to right find now. a girl that is the most similar to you when it comes to intelligence, self-esteem, ambitions, uh, personality-wise. They say that opposites attract. This is fucking. This is the biggest fucking bullshit I've ever heard. Opposites do not attract. The similar stuff attracts. Mm -hmm. If you if you like if you have a specific type of personality, you wanna hang out and you wanna have a girlfriend that has. Uh, the uh, the most a, similar you need to compliment to each other. Yeah, you need a exactly. Compliment. You you want you want somebody who is as empathetic as you, as intelligent yeah. as you, so they can understand stuff. As high self esteem as you, so she's not gonna be dragging you down. And if she's like high self esteem right. as you, you don't want to be dragging her down. And if you find the situation where you, you're living with a girl whose self esteem is lower than yours, the best way to fix that is to work on helping her build up her self esteem. Because mm -hmm. then she's gonna be happy, and you're gonna be happy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very, very interesting. 
That's some really cool stuff. I'm telling. I mean, I'm probably. I'm definitely gonna make myself do that at some point. But fuck, dude. I mean, I appreciate the advice. I'll probably. I'm gonna keep a lot of that in mind for for at some point. But yeah, very cool. Um, yeah, and then I actually have one one other question for you specifically, which is how you structured your relationship, um, and you know, not to intrude in any way at all. So just give the information that you feel comfortable sharing. How you structured the relationship where you guys feel comfortable going out together and pulling threesomes without, you know, um, a, you know, and what are maybe some obstacles that you mm -hmm. had to learn to, uh, overcome or manage in order for it to be successful thus far? Yeah, that, that's no secret. I can, I can tell you about it. I've actually already written an article that describes part of that and already had an interview with, uh, another coach from Australia that describes a big part of this, um, uh, this topic. Uh, but yeah, the so main. You don't have to uh, go me, crazy if it's already been talked about. Yeah, yeah it's, it's in cool. a nutshell. We we don't have that much time tonight. Uh, anyway, but uh, for me, the main point is not actually going out there and getting the threesome. That's the easiest part, actually. Uh, I'll tell you, it's easier to get a threesome with a girlfriend than getting a single uh, lay by yourself and one night stand. Uh, it's almost easier. Uh, but the main point is framing it from the beginning when you meet the girl as early as from the first night, uh, right? And I'm having a brain fart right now. Um, because we, we had a little talk about it earlier and you do, you do something similar. Uh, I, yeah, all right. my, have, my girlfriend similar, is, but there are differences. So, so yeah, I'm curious to hear how you There are differences. My girlfriend is actually straight. She's not uh, getting aroused by girls or whatever. Ah. So a lot of people are asking, how the fuck did you do that? Like, how did you brainwash your girlfriend into fucking other girls? Uh, so my approach about it, because that's how I did my five sum. Mm -hmm. Something that we didn't say is that uh, what I'm doing in the community for is the three sums, the four sums, the five sums, the little orgies that I do with my friends. Um, and those are two different things, by the way. When you do like a three sum, four sum, whatever with your friends, it's a completely different dynamic than when you do it with your girlfriend. Mm -hmm. It's... it's they, they have no similarities at all, uh, but I'm gonna focus on how do you do it with your, with your girlfriend or your fuck buddy or whatever uh, And it all comes down to, to framing it very early from the beginning Because the mistake that a lot of guys do when they think about this situation and they try to reproduce a situation where they go out and pick up girls with their girlfriends uh, is first they have entered a monogamous relationship Mm -hmm. So the frame that I have introduced in the relationship is that it's me and you and it's nobody else and um, yeah, this is a monogamous relationship basically, and then they try to uh, turn this later into an open relationship mm -hmm. or try to open up their girlfriend's minds into uh, sleeping with other girls, all right, which is, it's, it's not impossible, but it's super, super fucking hard because the, the girl's brain has already accepted the first frame ever introduced. This monogamous frame has been primed in their fucking neurons. It's like when you start with a belief and it's very hard for you to change the belief, like religious people, for example, they're very stubborn about some things or, you know, whatever, when it comes to politics and you have like an opinion, people are like very, very uh, defensive about their opinions. Uh, yeah. It's the same thing. This frame, this monogamous frame has been primed in their brains since the beginning of the relationship. So my, uh, my ways do the exact opposite. Uh, so how do I go about it? I go, I do, I have the one I stand with a girl. Uh, and then I slowly, and in the beginning, it's just for fun. It's all sex. It's all just for pleasure. There is no, uh, there is barely any comfort. There is no uh, emotional connection, if you want. So for the girl, you start as one night stand. Uh, she sees you as the player, the guy that goes out there and he has a lot, a big abundance, like a lot of options. Uh, so in her, in her mind, the first frame that is ever introduced is that this guy is a player. He sleeps around, but he's also cool about it. Mm -hmm. And that's why, you know, maybe she wants to meet you again. So if I, if I go, if I like a girl and then I want to meet her again, the next time that I will meet her uh, and have sex with her, I will start slowly opening up. I will start slowly building the comfort. Mm -hmm. Oh, you know, third, third time she comes and uh, meets me up, maybe we'll do some, uh, you know, cozy stuff. Mm -hmm. Maybe we'll watch a movie. Maybe we'll do something more. Maybe we'll cook a dinner. Uh, maybe we'll do more you know, relationship piece stuff, whatever. Um, and then this, uh, this thing that you have, it starts evolving into a relationship without the monogamous relationship frame. Mm -hmm. 
you already have the frame from the first night that you ever met that, okay, this guy is a player, uh, he has abundance, he has a lot of girls, and he's not going to drop this for me. Mm -hmm. But then slowly she starts getting this connection with you, she's getting hooked on you, uh, but she has already kind of like accepted the frame. Okay, it's, it's cool, the guy fucks other girls, he has abundance, but I also really, really fucking like him, I have uh, feelings for him, and I also don't feel threatened by the other girls he fights. Because I had, I had to uh, overcome this obstacle as well at some point in my relationship. Uh, and it was the first month when we started doing this threesome thing. Uh, at some point, if I remember right, my then fuck buddy, she was my fuck buddy, not my girlfriend. And she told me that, you know, I started getting feelings for you. Uh, and I don't know if I feel comfortable with this uh, thing that you're doing. You fucking other girls going to the club and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and I told her, listen, I know exactly what you mean. I know exactly how you feel about it. But you have to understand that. For me, you're like an established part of my life. You are there. I fucking like you for this and this and this. And all those girls that I, I go and, and uh, fuck in the club, for me, they're just like random sluts. They're, uh, I have no emotional connection. It's just for pleasure. It's just for the sex. Uh, and the, to a lot of girls that I had this in the past, I told them about the game. Mm. I told them what I do. And they accepted the frame because I told them very early about it. And then they're like, yeah, okay, this is his thing. He does, he does a... The game, he goes out, he fucks others, but I don't have to worry about it mm. because he likes me for specific things, uh, specific traits of my personality, and I don't have to feel threatened about the other girls. Yeah. I know that I'm already established in his life. I know that he's not going to stop seeing me, so I don't have to worry about the other girls. <clears throat> yeah, there's something then, very interesting where the moment that the girl starts to think you have emotional connections with other girls, that like that's where a lot of the jealousy tends to come from. Mm -hmm. Whereas like exactly. when it's just sex, for some reason they don't care as much. Not every girl, but that is what I find the most. The moment they're like, "Oh well, I it was just it's just sex, so what the fuck do I care?" You know. But the moment yeah. she's like, "Do you actually like this girl?" Like, do you like you'll get that question. Do you actually like these? That's girls? yeah. That's, that's when you gotta yeah. really start managing their emotions. Yeah, very interesting. You found that too. Cool. Uh, but this is, dude, this is nature. Uh, women, you know, from, from a, a biology perspective, you know, why would they care if you, you know, you impregnate other women? If we go back to prehistoric times and think about that, why would they care? Well, just because of resources. They don't want to, they don't want you to share your resources with other Exactly. Girls. Exactly. So that's why they're afraid of you, you getting care, an emotional connection. Yeah. That's why they care if you get an emotional connection with other women. But if you just fuck them and or you just like spread your shit or whatever, yeah. they're cool with it. Yeah. Uh, right. Women are, are absolutely cool with you fucking others. That's a key phrase I'm saying right now. They're absolutely cool with you fucking others. As long as they absolutely know and trust you that you're not going to ditch them for somebody else. Right. They have that's to their feel own fear. like they're... A lot of it also I find is because they don't want to feel like they're investing emotions into somebody who could very easily leave. And if you care about these other girls, like not just your resources, like your, you know, your money and whatever, but if you're going to very e – if you could leave, right, the only reason why you would ever leave is if you stop caring about her. And if you start caring about somebody else, mm -hmm. it's very easy for you to stop caring about her. And so she needs to feel, look, I get it. You're a guy. You're – like you said, like you're a player and I get it. And one thing that girls I find love is like when you're that player or you have the ability to be a player, but there's something where this girl, you get something from her that she can't, you can't get anywhere else and she feels so significant exactly. from that. The moment you're taking that away from her too, what the fuck does she mean to you? Exactly. So they need to know that you appreciate them for something yeah. specific and that they're going to be a part of your life. And that's like the frame you introduce. Right. I'm yeah. a player. This is what I do. If you have to accept it, I like you. And as long as you don't, uh, demand that I did what I do for you, that's cool. Yep. You can be part of my life and I'm going to love you and you know I can have feelings for you as long as I can keep doing my thing and that's perfectly fine. And now the next part of uh, you know this whole approach in the threesomes is uh, introducing the game as, as something fun that you can do together. Mm -hmm. So uh, what I did uh, with my fuck buddies back then when it, uh, I did my five sum uh, was that I, I started talking to all of them about the game very early when I first from when I first met them like the first week they already like knew what I'm, I'm doing they already knew what's up and I was telling them stories I was telling them or I was telling them about other girls I was telling them about funny shit that I do with my wings all the retarded situations in the clubs 
I was I was even mentioning names of other fuck buddies. So, you know, they, they have in their mind that, okay, this girl is there, she exists, but I don't have to feel threatened about her. Mm-hmm. Kind of like that. Uh, and then eventually, you at some point, they might even want to join you out of nowhere. You might stumble on them in the club and you'd be like, oh, you know what? Come with me. Let's do that. Let's do some game together. Yeah. As long as you're like very, you're going like lighthearted about it and you're not like pushy. Oh, yeah, let's go out. Let's get three sums. Let's do this. As long as you don't push them into it. It's cool. Like a motto that I have in life is I cannot control, I can only inspire them. Mm -hmm. I can only inspire people. And it's the same in this situation. You cannot like control them and push them into winning you and getting the threesome with you. You have to slowly inspire them and show them that this is something fun that we can, that we can do together. So they won't, they won't buy themselves to be a part of it. Mm -hmm. And if you start being pushed about it, you know, they're, they're going to drop it. Yep. Yeah. It's, it's another thing that I find like with my students is they'll see how sexual my conversations get with girls. So they'll try to replicate it and create a similar situation, but they don't understand. I'm just kind of fucking around and sharing a part of my personality. And so what they do is they got, get all like, they try horny. to force it. They try to get all horny seventh grader who just hit puberty right on, on the girl. And all of a sudden, like, you know, they're like pushing for like the make out, like, she made out with them once. They're like trying to get it again and again and again. And it's like, dude, calm down. It'll all happen. Set it up. You know, exactly. talk about it. Explore the idea with the girl. But don't fucking like make it into the biggest deal because now all of a sudden it's a huge deal and the girl's going to overthink it. She's going to think, you know, like uh, it, it's such a huge, huge fucking thing where guys make sex into a big deal. And that's mm-hmm. when the girl feels like, oh, well, I guess sex is a big deal with this fucking dude. But like you said before, exactly, you exactly. have it. You have it the other way, and that's how I have it as well. Is where you talk about sex with other girls, two girls you're already meeting. So she's like, "Oh, with this guy, it's not a big deal. If we were to bang, he's probably me." I get all the time, like, "Wow, if you bang a lot of girls, you teach guys how to do this. You're probably amazing in bed." Like, so they explore this with me, and one thing they realize for me, very hardcore, is they're not going to get judged. You know, especially when we were talking about like uh, how I like, you know, one thing that I've gotten pretty skilled at is taking girls from their boyfriends. I never, ever come off as the guy who likes them more than their boyfriend. I come off Mm -hmm. as a very fun sexual dude who like very easily could just be friends with her because I don't fucking care. I have other girls. Right. I could very easily just be friends with her. But it allows me to throw in flirtatious comments where she's like, oh, that's just Chris. He's just fucking around. You know, and so she explores that flirtatious moment with me, uh, in the con- it, like outside of the context of we're flirting, we really like each other. It's just oh, this is how I talk to Chris. This is how we communicate. But what it's, what's happening is actually creating attraction. Like her boyfriend just like, she's like, no, what do you mean? You know, it, we're just goofing around. Like you know, Chris, he's just fucking, he just jokes around a lot. Uh, how do you go about the fast pools? Because you mentioned that this is something that you do a lot. Yeah. Um, well, my polls on average are probably within 15 minutes of meeting the girl. You know, they're within actually 15? Within, within 15 minutes of meeting the girl. Yeah, Impressive. 10 to 15 minutes. They're actually even consistently lower now, like within a few minutes. I'm pretty – the thing is I've gotten really good at recognizing where the windows are and what kind mm-hmm. of – where the girl's level of comfort is to consi- so I could sort of build into it so that she's really ready to leave very early on. And so – uh, what I was telling you and what I've actually been teaching a lot of my students lately, and this is kind of like a new new concept that I've really been building into, is treating the girl the entire way through that we're a team and like it's, you know, there's uh, nothing that I would do that she's not ready for. So let me give you um, an example of what I mean. So a lot of guys, one of the things, uh, like a go-to line that I have um, that went right before hooking up with the girl Um, especially if I'm getting like resistance, you know, and she's like not totally there. One of the things I say to her is I, um, I don't want to do this with you if it means I'll never see you again. Right. And so what I used to say, that's that's a really good one. So, but you know, but you know what I used to think it meant, uh, and how I meant it, but what it was, I don't like, I'm not the guy that's just trying to bang you tonight I'm trying to bang you over and over and over again right and so like that's what and if this is going to be a cheap one night stand then I'm not interested and it really helps solidify like oh no he's he actually does have something for me especially keep in mind 
Oh, very often, what I was telling you was I, I do have a lot of the player vibe. And so that was like, was like the comfort in it. But what I realized recently was there's a deeper meaning to that. It means if you're not ready to have sex, that's cool because I'm not here for the sex. I'm here to hang out with you and sex is just a great thing we could experience together. But if you're not ready for it, I'd rather give up the sex tonight and, and have it with you later on when you are ready because... Again, we're a team. Just like you would never take a step. Uh, how do you how do you convey that in just fifteen minutes? Uh, you said you said this phrase that so, oh, so I, I don't is, want to do yeah. something that yeah. if that means that I'm not gonna see you again. Yeah, yeah. But that is pretty genius. So I'm gonna build into that. What I just wanted to to convey was like how that where that all leads to. So what happens is I, I realized what was going on was that when I started saying things like that. It was like I would never take a step that the girl wasn't ready for and she gets it, right? She understands I would never take a step that she wasn't ready for. So if she wasn't ready for sex, that's fine because I, I really enjoy the girl. And so if I if she's not ready now, that's okay because I'll see her tomorrow and we'll do it then. So if it means give it if it means us having sex means me trading you all together, like you're you're out because you know something happened with the sex that could happen too quickly. That's fine. I'd rather give up the sex and not have it at all. And the moment the girl's like, "Wow, sex means nothing." Like I mean more to him than the sex. That's when she's like, "All right, well, let's fucking do it." You know. So is is uh it was really cool. So what I do very early on is I treat the girl like she and I are a fucking team. So there's there's a great way to start creating that is. For one, I'll joke around. I love saying things to the girl like, ah, oh, you know, especially when I've proven my value, like the girl recognized I'm the shit, everyone's loving me, and now she gets to be with the cool guy. The thing is, there's a book called The Charisma Myth, right? And they talk mm -hmm. about what what makes a person so charismatic is when they're so high value, but but now people could benefit from the value, you know? So if you're a really cool guy, but you're not interested in like getting to know her, being with her. Like you're just a cool guy. It means nothing really to her, right? Mm -hmm. But the moment you start including her, and you're like, she's like, damn, this guy's so cool, and you're like, well, you're so fucking cool, right? And she's like, that's that's crazy. Why does he like me? That's nuts. So and so, just to give a comparison of, of what that even means, because a lot of guys don't understand why that's not needy. If a homeless guy came up to you and said you're cool. It wouldn't mean that a whole lot to you. But if Michael Jordan came up to you or, or like the most charismatic guy you know and he's like, dude, you're very cool, you'd be like, really, mm -hmm. right? It, it mean, it's a totally different context. He has value. So I make sure that my value is understood and I will say things to her like, damn, you're so fucking cool. For instance, I went, I went, uh, I w I've been seeing this girl. She's a new girl in my rotation. She's a bombshell Ukrainian girl. And uh, we went bowling, right? And the entire time, like, I'm, you know, I'm not a great bowler, but I was doing well. I would get strikes. And she turns to me, she's like, how are you so good? And I just turned to her, I'm like, couldn't do it without you, right? And the, it's like, fucking, I couldn't get a strike without her. Give me a break. But she, but she knows it's not true, and she still sees that I'm like, no, we're a team, <laughs> right? You're a, I couldn't do it without your team. You know, we do this together. Um, so what I do very early on is I invite them home. Um, as my guest is somebody I'd love to bring into my life very early on. I'm not afraid to look needy or like the fact that I'm so indifferent about looking needy is what makes me, you know, not like it's, it's like, uh, I don't know how to, I'm trying to find a way how to say this. I don't care. Uh, that, it's, it's not what you say, it's where it comes from. And right. you're actually not the needy guy. So if you say it, it doesn't come out as needy. Right. And so, it's, and it's I always, that. right. And I add context to it. So if she's like, She's like, I don't understand, you know, why do you want to bring, like, why me? There's other girls here, right? Like, these are common things that I'll get. And I'll say, look. Oh, I get that the whole right. fucking time. And I actually have a very similar approach to you. Like, those things you said really, really remind me of the things that I usually say. Uh, I, I go in very high value. They know I'm a player from the first moment. Uh, and then I get these comments. Oh, you know, why the fuck are you here with me? Why don't you just go and pick up some other girl and go fuck her? Uh, and what I usually, something along those lines. Uh, something I usually say is, uh, but you know, like you see me, you know that it wouldn't be a problem for me. I can go and like get another girl and go uh, home in 20 minutes and fuck her. But this is not special because I've done it so many times. It's like, it's, it, it has lost its meaning. Right. But I, I want to understand that the reason why I'm here and I'm talking to you and not there like trying to fuck some random girl is because I actually enjoy your company. I actually want to get to know you better.
Right. So it's this thing you come as a play, you come and this actually amplifies it that you come off as a uh, as a player, but oh wait a minute. I'm the girl out of all the girls in the club that actually gets to hang out with the player for real, get to know him, and I'm the girl that he's interested to actually genuinely uh, he wants to get to know. Right, right. That's a great that's a great frame to set. I also like for example, if a girl says that to me, I'm like, what, could we not include other girls and actually you know be in each other's space, like really get to know each other? Like, could we not fucking talk about other people? Mm -hmm. Now, how do you go I about shut the down that frame? So, so what I try, go ahead. How do I go about what? How do you go about the actual pool? You said you invite them straight away home. Um, how so do you go there? So there's a few, there's a few red flags that a lot of guys go about. For one is they try to not look needy or, or they don't communicate their interest and it's the gayest shit ever. So for one, um, they're like, oh, um, hey, so we're like, uh, this is not so bad, but there's a better level to it is guys will say, look, um, we're throwing a little bit of an after party. We sh um, I'd love for you to come with. And although that's really cool, if we were to come back to the date concept that we we're talking about, and if we didn't already expand on it, I'm not sure if we did, you would never ever, go if you were on a date with a girl, you would never ever talk to her and say, hey, I'm going to this next place, you should come with. It's like, it's fucking stupid. You would never say yeah. that. So same thing, I treat her like we're on a date and I say, look, that we, we could throw a little bit, we could have a little bit of an after party together. Um, I live pretty close by, you know, we, like we could drink shots, whatever. And I start like giving her things that we could do. And I give her excuses uh, or rather reasons of why it makes sense. So let me give you uh, an example. I will take whatever's in the environment and, and uh, tell her why that's a problem. So I'll say, I'd love to be able to go somewhere with you where it's not loud as fuck. And I can uh, actually really I do that a lot. That's a good one. There's also, I say things like, look, I live pretty close by. I'd love to be able to take you, um, I, you know, I'd love to be able to do, uh, like have drinks with you without having to spend a hundred dollars and wait for a 20 minute line, you know? So like, she's like, you know what? I don't want to wait in 20 minute line either. I, drinks are expensive. So I give her, and that's just like, I have an endless how do you, string of those. How do you deal about, uh, how do you deal with objections like friends or whatever? Mostly with the friends is the, the hardest objection, according so, to me. So the biggest thing is, I all, again, like I always come back to we're a team. So if we're a team and I'm not going to do anything that she doesn't want to do, and she's like, oh, but I'm here with my friends, be like, that's cool. Just tell them, just tell them like you met a guy that you really like and, um, and that we're just going to go get some food or, you know, we're just going to get some air. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, it's, it's very much like if you were her, if you were her protector, these, these, the way it would come off is so natural already. So you'd say mm. like, well, look, if you, I mean, I don't think they'll actually care if you met, um, you know, if you met a guy that you liked, like personally, I have a lot of female friends and only when we meet, only when we know that our girls with our, our girlfriends with somebody who, a guy who we don't trust, that's when we're like, okay, bro, you're not taking her anywhere. But if it's a cool guy, like he has sh his shit together, you know, yeah, yeah. generally they're very cool. So if you want, like uh, we could go meet them. I could introduce myself and then, and then, um, and then I'll tell them, you know, and just make sure they're okay. So I'll go there and I'll build, I'll just like introduce myself. I'll tell them a little bit about myself and I'd say, look, I'm actually so hungry and I'm really enjoying spending time with your friends. We're, we're going to, we're just going to go outside for a bit. Um, you know, uh, and that's basically like, I want them to understand and I'm, and I'll say, don't worry, we're coming right back. Here's my number. You could take it and text me. So the thing is, I still, I treat her like we're on a date. I will take her. Mm -hmm away from anyone who's not, um, you know, necessary to have in our group, right? And um, at any point where, and but like I'm constantly making sure she's on the same page, like always checking, right? I'll say, is that all right? Like I live, I live a few minutes away. Um, is it all right if I show you where I live? Like I'd love to be able to show you, you know, like where I live is such an important place to me. Um, I have my bookcase I was telling you about. I'd love to be able to show you. It's such a big part of my life. Mm -hmm. Whatever it is, I'm trying to include her. Like, she's already a big part of my life. Yeah, and I'm just, I get it. And I'm just trying to make it better. So, um, you know, and a lot of guys, what's very important, though, is a lot of guys will, will do what I'm saying to do, but they forget about the team part. So the moment that the girl says, um, I'm not ready, they're like, well, why not? You know, and they kind of insist on it. Yeah, and then they get in a... And then they get into, like, like, a debate about yeah. it. And instead exactly. of just saying, well, look, you don't have to, like, we don't have to do anything right. Like, there we go. Like, we, we don't have to do anything. 
I'm just really like spending time with you and it'd be cool to be able to show you but but again like my what I'd really love is for you to be totally comfortable mm -hmm. with me so we could actually like let our guards down and really get to know each All other right. and so whenever you're ready for that like I will so so one thing so that and that's how I do it so one thing is if you notice it's constantly reframing things in her mind constantly like she sees going home with a guy as a slutty thing I'm reframing uh, you it. reframe it as something special and, so that's, exactly I do I do a lot of those things already but it was uh, the whole concept of it especially like treating her as you're in a date and the whole team thing is actually very smart and I'm definitely gonna apply some of those uh, concepts yeah. maybe even tonight because I'm going it's, out pretty soon it's the uh, shit. it's also but, it's it's also really cool when the moment um, you know you start to to realize like you're gonna get a lot of challenges like the girl will say things that you already experienced like mm -hmm. I'm not that like what kind of girl would I be if I came home with you and you're like well it's not really like that but truthfully probably a, a very chill one you know and like you're reframing it as you're not a slut you're a very chill girl right so the whole thing is I, I understand where what what their concerns are right and I Com I communicate to them. I reframe it. So yeah, those yeah, concerns exactly. are not legitimate in this situation. And a lot and of sometimes, guys, yeah. uh, sometimes since you already know those concerns because you've encountered them so many times before, you can address them before they even come up in the conversation. Right, right. Kind of like for already sure. predict what she's gonna say. Uh, but we need, we actually need to uh, finish the call pretty soon because I'm very tired on the time. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so are there any? Um, any last things that you would like to tell the guys that are gonna watch this uh, about like the concepts that you teach? We already you already told us about the fast pulse sure. and the whole mentality about the night, the date, uh, about the night, uh, treating it as a date. Uh, are there any like pillars in your coaching in the things that you teach that you would like the guys to know about? Um, what one thing that I always really uh, I think every guy needs to learn is to always see yourself as the better option. You always mm -hmm. need to see yourself as the highest value guy that she could ever possibly meet. So the moment you, you know, so, and when you see yourself as things like that, whether she's with the guy, whether she's talking to the bartender, whether she's having a drink, you need to see yourself as the best thing that she could probably possibly ever spend time with. And like, once you realize that, once you see yourself as that way, most of your concerns about whether or not to approach, whether or not to invite her home early on, whether or not to, um, you know, they go out the window. And the other thing is I, I teach guys like don't fucking lie, you know, like really or like don't be sketchy or like ambiguous. So one thing that is a big mistake that a lot of guys make is they don't tell the girl we're going to my home. They say, oh, we're going to this place. And then all of a sudden they end up being at their home and the girl's like, it's a big Yeah, I think switch. this is retarded. It's, it's a retarded. massive communication of distrust. She cannot trust you that your word is is what it is, you know. She's like, oh, well, how the fuck did we end up here? And every guy's been there. Right when you don't tell them you're going to your home, yeah. every guy's been there. They're like, "Really? Oh, so you live here, right?" And so you live here. So uh, you live here. Exactly. <laughs> right? exactly. And it's like, come on, dude. Like, just let her know what's up. When you make it sound like going to your home is a big deal or it's something that is wrong, it's not supposed to happen. That's when she's gonna feel that way too. When I say things like, "No, I I live pretty close by. I'd love to be able to show you my home, whatever." I make it sound like it's not a big deal at all. And so she never assumes it's a big deal. And it blows my students' minds every fucking time. They're like, you just, we just invited them home and they were cool with it. It's, I don't understand. And, but you learn in the community that the word apartment is like a big no, no, it's a taboo. It's like cross that out of your vocabulary, you know, and it's not true. It's, you know, going to the, saying things like don't worry uh like she's like where are we going you're like don't worry about it like that's a fucking cross that that's shit out of you yeah but uh yeah i would say that's that's more or less it um you know i think we ran like a pretty cool video there's a lot of good information in here um it was a little bit of a like a teaser about you know what we're about what we like to teach and mm -hmm. you know for guys who really are learning things that like what we talked about or are interested in learning that they resonate with you know, they could go to your, your YouTube channel. They could go to my YouTube channel. What's your YouTube channel and your contact information? How, yeah. how can people get in touch with you? Uh, first of all, there is a Facebook group, which is the main pillar of my company right now. It's just called Social Prime. Uh, and then it's the same with the YouTube channel. I think you're going to put links under the description, Absolutely, right? Absolutely, yeah. All right. 
Uh, and before we close it, I want to tell the guys a bit, just a tiny bit of uh, what I teach right now and what I'm researching on. Uh, I, I call this concept the supernatural is the main pillar in all the theory I have in the boot camps, in the Skype coaching, in upcoming seminars and webinars. Uh, and it basically consists of two parts. First one is inner game, which I, I think is the main pillar for everyone. Um, uh, and specifically what we do in the inner game part is we're going back into time. We're finding all those dysfunctional beliefs. We're going back into the guy's mind, into the memories, into the past. Uh, and we kind of like eliminate them. We, uh, we unroot them from the brain and then we um, kind of like reprogram the subconscious with those new beliefs that are trying to replicate the mindsets of, of a natural uh, so you can go out there into the real world and basically do effortless game like a natural would do. And then the outer game part is the second part of the, the supernatural concept. Uh, that's where the, the super comes from. Uh, it's a very simple but very advanced calibration system uh, that focuses a lot on body language and on reading personalities accurately. Like uh, you go to the club and it's it's pretty much like when you when you see people, you can see everything, their insecurities, their level of self-esteem, uh, their beliefs about themselves, what they worry about. It focuses a lot, a lot on like reading expressions, reading the style of the clothes. It's pretty much everything. It's And it's the closest, uh, I think, that guys in the community can come to reading somebody's mind. Mm -hmm. um, and then you basically bring up your aspects of your, the aspects of your personality that resonate best with this, uh, the readings that you made about the other person. So you can connect very, very fast and effortlessly. So if a girl is more on the value side, you try to display your value uh, side of your personality. And if the girl is more comfort, introverted, more shy, you try to bring up those personality traits of yours. Uh, and of course, it's not just a game concept. All those are uh, infinite, like immensely um, helpful, useful right. when it comes, yeah, helpful, useful when it comes to business. Uh, making money, friendships, and pretty much every aspect of your life. Yeah. It's an emotional game there between human beings always. And so you're teaching them how to really connect and like be of value to somebody else on an emotional level. Yes, exactly. Huge. So Very cool. All right. Uh, bro, it was an amazing um, call and we should definitely do one more, one more of those in the future. Yeah, absolutely. And to the guys from Social Prime that are going to watch this, uh, I really recommend you take a look at Chris Sandel. He's got a lot uh, of cool videos. He's got interviews with other coaches. Uh, he's a lot, if you haven't realized yet from this call, uh, a lot of the concepts and a lot of the um, things that we do are similar. Although we have a lot of differences, a lot of the things that we do are similar. Um, and if you're resonating with social prime stuff, you're going to probably resonate with a lot of Chris stuff. Uh, he's one of the best coaches in New York. You are based in New York, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Exactly. And I'll be coming to uh, Europe, but yeah. For guys who want to reach out to me, you know, YouTube videos, you could search Chris Parker NYC. Um, if exactly. you go to facebook.com forward slash Chris Parker uh, dating, you'll find me. Uh, Chris Parker NYC.com is another great all those, resource. Yeah, all those links yeah. are going to be in the description if you guys want to check it out. Chris is going to come to Europe, as he said. Uh, I'm probably going to America really soon on the West Coast nice. of Los Angeles. We might do some uh, close collaborations together in the future. Yep. Yeah, so uh, if you're yeah. interested in doing something like that, like a joint program, reach out to either of us and you know we will set something like that up. Um, the last thing I would just say is you know, for guys who, um, who are interested in uh, taking a program with me, uh, you had your, your, your supernatural course. What I have is I teach guys more or less, uh, the, the programs that I'm running now are learn how to pull within 30 minutes. You know, the only requirements Which really is amazing. Are, uh, Anyone could do it as long as you're like you're comfortable um, touching a girl, right? Like you, you know, you could go for a makeout. You don't have to be like the most suave guy, but you got to be comfortable like being physical with her, and you got to be able to speak. You know, guys, guys are like they, you know, they see that the girl's down to come or maybe not down to come right away, and so they just give up right then. Like, oh, I thought like you, you know, when you show me how to frame it so that they go home, like that's it. It's a bang right there. It's like no, dude, you actually have to be able to carry the conversation. For, for, you know, well, indefinitely, really. But um, so as long as you could speak and as long as you're comfortable, you, know, you could run your mouth and you could, you're comfortable putting your arm on a girl or whatever, you could do this. Um, 30 minutes is like an easy, easy promise. And uh, yeah, I'm, dude, great fucking call. Uh, I'm sure we'll do more in the future. This was a Definitely. great, great intro to, uh, you know, our content, though.